uh, as I said before, and I accept what the, the member is saying, but now is the time to bring those arguments out. Kia ora. I call Simon O'Connor. Very pleased to, through an SOP I've only tabled in the last uh, few minutes, bring a new avenue of thought, uh, particularly in this part one, and particularly addressing the question of eligibility. And in this particular regard, uh, my SOP is seeking to amend or rather add a new clause at 12A. So this is in relation to MC4. Um, and to get to it uh, relatively succinctly is to do with the uh, national immunisation schedule. I've put down here that any person receiving a Best Start tax credit, as referred to in MC1, shall confirm that any dependent children uh, have fulfilled the requirements of the New Zealand immunisation schedule as they relate to the age of the dependent uh, child. So if we accept, and I don't fully do, but if we accept, Mr Chair, that the Best Start grant is a positive step forward and that the handing out of, of cash uh, is going to do the trick, then I would argue or suggest that this is also a mechanism via eligibility to ensure the good health of that child through existing mechanisms, that being the national immunisation uh, schedule. I would also make the argument, and hence why the SOP has been tabled in the last few minutes, it's also for the public good. So members will hopefully understand that we have a register from effectively um, birth right through till actually old age, but we're talking about four sections of the schedule here up to but not including four years of age where children receive various vaccinations. Um, Mr Chair, I for one am a, a very strong and ardent supporter of vaccinations. In fact, you may even go as far to suggest I am for the mandatory immunisation of our children. Um, as a number of countries, I think including Australia, have uh, gone down the line recently, and I see with this piece of uh, legislation being proposed that we have an apt mechanism via the Best Start tax credit to, if, to encourage, if not mandate, vaccination of children. So fundamentally, this SOP in my name comes back to how can we constructively use the eligibility criteria for the Best Start tax credit to ensure that the parents get their children immunised? And I'd like to put it to the Minister. Um, does he see value in using his tax credit to bring about further individual and public goods? Because I think fundamentally this is a, a good idea and I'd like to understand if he sees it as such, it's possible. I don't want to presume the minister's uh, response. Uh, he may feel that this is not quite the right way to do it. And if that were the case, I would welcome a chance, a discussion, be it in this debate or elsewhere, of how we bring this about. As I say, this is a public good. We all know that the immunisation of the many protect the few that do not. But it's also good for the child. And I suppose that's a question in... Point of order. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Grant. I'm sorry to interrupt the member, but uh, I do wonder, and I know this SOP has only just been tabled in the House, but the issue of the national immunisation schedule is not covered in any form whatsoever in the Acts oh, yeah. being amended um, in Part 1. No. <laughs> um, it's, it's my opinion that uh, the member can speak to uh, this uh, tabled amendment. Um, at the end of the day, it will be t up to the House to decide. Simon Monaco. Um, thank you, uh, Mr Chair. Look, I'm, I'm more than happy to engage in a discussion and a debate with the Minister around how the schedule works and the various acts, order of councils that bring it about is quite a legitimate uh, thing in and of itself. But I think what's really important, and I, I think now I need to absolutely hammer it home, this is about providing the Minister uh, and the Government with an eligibility option to obviously access the Best Start grant, but also bring about some other particular uh, goods. So I'm really just suggesting that we enable this uh, SOP to be considered, to be inserted in, as I say, as a new uh, clause, 12A. Um, it's relatively simple. The legislations, the mechanisms, the regulations are already in play. Um, I do accept that I may need to go away and provide a few more SOPs to bring about how we verify uh, this, obviously, the uh, parent or parents will have to verify. I assume it's through the IRD that this has been done, uh, but I am very aware, Mr Chair, that there are mechanisms or agreements, if you will, in place between various government agencies at the moment, and without going on too much of a tangent, because I'm conscious of, 
of my time that the Ministry of Health already records all of this on its internal system. So I don't think it will be overly difficult uh, for, say, the Ministry of Health uh, to inform IRD that actually this particular dependent child uh, has received all the immunisations. There are quite a number of them. If the Minister is interested, it is on the Ministry of Health website. But fundamentally, I am asking the Minister not to deny that the register is, is, is there, but to say, does he see a benefit in this eligibility criteria? And if he doesn't, then why are we missing an opportunity to actually help the child simply beyond handing money to the parents? I would hope that most members of uh, this House and the Minister indeed himself would understand the good reasoning and scientific principles of why we need our children immunised. So let's not simply Give them the money. Let's also protect the. Uh, Michael Jane Logie. Mr. Chair, um, as this debate.